Hello everybody and welcome back to the Moldy Worm Gaming Channel. My name is Moldy Worm 41975 and in today's video we are continuing our SnowRunner Let's Play. This is episode 17. If you guys haven't seen any of the previous episodes and you're interested in watching them then I will leave a link in the description below to a SnowRunner playlist I've made with all of the SnowRunner episodes I've made. But a couple of episodes ago, um, we actually went and explored the brand new Rift map that came out uh, in the latest SnowRunner update. And we didn't really get a chance to explore that map very much. We did go and rescue the APC tank, but I mentioned that we were going to go back in a future episode and explore that map, try and uncloak all the watch points, and today is that episode. Uh, so. To do this task, we need a scout vehicle. I'm not going to be taking one of the big rigs out today. And I've got possibly the best scout vehicle in the game. And here it is, the International Lodestar 1700. This thing is absolutely awesome. It's got loads of customization, which we're going to go through in just a second. Um, a couple of them were locked, so I went out in another scout vehicle and try to unlock all the upgrades for this thing so we can fully trick it out in today's video uh, but let me just show you the map that we are going to be exploring so in the last episode we went and unlocked the Zindagorsk garage which is where we are at the moment so we're going to be traveling to the quarry and then we're going to be traveling to the rift but before all that, we need to go ahead and customize our international load start because it's a little bit um, plain and a little bit boring at the moment. So, in the engine category, there is only one other engine you can put in this thing. And I'm going to throw that in the vehicle. I have no idea why because apparently it doesn't actually improve this thing. Like you can see, it doesn't change the statistics or anything like that uh, but it does say it increases power output reliability acceleration but the fuel consumption does go down but none of the stats change so we'll, we'll leave it in there but um, I don't really see any point in that um, the gearboxes we have unlocked them so we can get the high range gearbox or the off-road gearbox I am going to go for the off-road gearbox today I'm gonna give it a try and see what we can do we can actually raise the suspension on this thing so I'm gonna do that now tires this is where it gets important um, there are 35 inch as standard or if you have the lift kit you can put 41s on so not massive tires but considering this thing is a scout vehicle um, that is actually pretty good we're going to go down to the off-road category and I feel like something like those uh, almost look like tractor tyres. They look really like beastly off-road tyres. Um, the winch, we're going to go ahead and put the autonomous scout on there just in case we do roll over. Frame add-ons, there is actually a couple of frame add-ons for this thing. So you can have the pickup chassis which does have some spare tyres in the back, which is quite useful. You can have the service cab, which is basically like the van body add-on, which uh, does provide a little bit of... Um, a little bit spare parts, which is quite cool. And you can actually get a loading crane on this thing. So I believe this is the only scout that you can put a loading crane on. Uh, but for today's video, I'm going to go with the pickup chassis add-on. Um, mainly just for the spare tyres and I think it looks really cool as well. We can also put a snorkel on this thing which you can see is just on the left hand side there the short round cap so we'll throw that on. In visuals there is actually a few different things we can do so in miscellaneous we can have a caged beacon we can have two square beacons, we can have chrome bullet parking lights, which I actually really like. Um, I mentioned in a previous episode that I do really like those. We can have twin horns, we can have external horns, and we can actually have a searchlight, which is really cool. So I'm going to go with the chrome parking lights, and 
I'm not going to go with the horns this time. Yeah, I think we'll just leave it with that, the chrome parking lights. Then on the rooftop, we can go for a flasher bar, which almost makes it look like a police vehicle. You can go for the roof fog lights, and you can go for the roof fog lights with beacons. Uh, you guys just know that I'm going to go for the roof fog lights. I absolutely love roof fog lights. I think they just look awesome. Uh, on the front bumper, you can have the heavy duty pipe. You can have the angled. You can have the defender. You can have the hinged. And you can have the stock. Um, I'm actually going to leave the stock on here because I think that looks really nice. And some of these... Um, some of these look a little bit interesting. Like that one looks a bit too bulbous for my liking. Um, I would go with this because we get some extra rally lights down there. But we can't because that's locked. So I'm just going to stick with the stock. On the front side we can go for an angled sun visor. I'm not going to go for that because I don't really think it suits it on this vehicle. And we can actually change the rims up on this thing. So even though this is not one of the big semi trucks, um, it is actually quite a large scout vehicle. So we can actually go ahead and change the rims. Um, I don't really know what rims we want to put on this thing. Um, ooh, they look quite beastly some of these later ones look a little bit interesting I do actually quite like those so yeah I'm gonna go ahead and put those on then in the paint section unfortunately there is no like crazy livery that you can get for this thing a real missed opportunity there um, I think this thing would have been awesome with like some flames or something like that but apparently SnowRunner aren't any fun but if we go down to the bottom, there is all the usual two tones. So we can have this like light blue, sort of sea green almost. Um, you can have the red and black. You can have brown and beige. Looks very old fashioned and I really don't like it. You can have green and black or you can have light blue and dark blue. But for today's episode, um, I'm actually going to go with a solid colour and I'm feeling like a Hummer yellow. This thing um, just looks awesome in yellow, so I'm going to put it in yellow. And that is the thing fully customised. Um, it does have all-wheel drive and diff locks, which are permanently turned on from standard. Uh, we've got the off-road tyres on there now and we have got some spare tyres. Okay, we are outside for the first time in the International Load Star. I have to say this thing has been raised quite a lot. It does look absolutely massive. Um, we do also have the high range gear option and we have now got two different low box options. So hopefully shouldn't have any problems with getting stuck today. Uh, but we are going to go ahead and travel to the quarry. You can see the um, checkpoint is literally just down the road from the garage. And then we need to travel to the rift. And here we go. We are back in quarry once again. We travelled here in the previous episode. Um, we might go ahead and explore this map in a future episode. Uh, but for today we need to actually travel to the rift map. And the only way you can do that at the moment is through the gateway here in Quarry. So we travelled to the rift in a previous episode. Basically there is a little tiny road up here which I'll show you when we get there. Uh, but first we need to make our way around the quarry. So I have actually driven this thing a little bit off camera. Um, not like anything crazy. Uh, I didn't really do much with it. I didn't actually do any missions or anything. I just gave it a little drive out just to see how the thing performs. And I just wanted to make sure that it could cope with travelling to the rift. And I have to say, it is a pretty good off-roader. Um, at the time, I didn't upgrade it at all. I had the normal road slick tyres on. And um, I didn't have any of the customization options and it actually fared pretty well so 
with all of the extra things we've put on it today, hopefully we shouldn't have any issues with getting stuck. And we have now arrived at the little passageway, if the camera will just behave. So for those of you who might not have seen the previous Rift episode we did, or who haven't seen any gameplay of it, basically you have to go up this tiny little passageway here. So only the sort of scout vehicles can travel to here, to the Rift. Um, you can get a big truck up there with some careful driving, but it's not very easy. So if you want to travel to the Rift, I definitely recommend scout vehicle. And there is also no tunnel. There is just the yellow box. It's kind of hidden. Um, but yeah, let's travel to the Rift. And here we go, back in the Rift. Sadly, there is no like cinematic entrance uh, like there is with some of the uh, some of the other maps. And I'll just show you the map here. It's not actually that massive. Um, there is usually four watch points for you to go and discover, but in the previous Rift episode we did, we actually went and uncloaked one of the watchtowers. So today we're going to go and see if we can actually uncloak the remaining three. So you spawn here, this is where you pop out, and the closest one I can see is this one just to our right. So we want to just travel down this road till we get to basically the main road and then just carry on and hopefully the watchtower should be just there. Alright, so we just want to turn right and then carry on on this road and we should be golden. Now for those of you who wonder why I put the lift kit on nearly all of the vehicles, um, it's basically to stop it getting stuck on little trees and things like this and it also has the uh, added benefit of you can put the big tires on uh, but the only problem with raising your truck is that it does make it a bit more top heavy so a lot of the times when you raise your truck you raise the center of gravity and when you're going over a slope that can make it a little bit more tippy so little top tip for you, if you don't think you need to raise the suspension, don't raise the suspension. Um, I've put it on this thing because as stock it's quite low, uh, but some of the vehicles are already quite high off the ground, so things like the ANK probably don't need a lift kit. It is kind of a shame that the Rift map doesn't actually have a garage. Um, also, which way do we want to be going here? Alright, we want to turn to the right, okay. Yeah, it's a little bit of a shame that the Rift map doesn't have a, um, a garage, because the only way you can actually travel to it is through the quarry at the moment. And uh, obviously that is not the best way to travel to the maps. I mean, um, the passageway, as you just saw, is tiny. So you really struggle to get some of the bigger trucks to this map. And uh, for some of the missions, you really do need a big truck. Uh, but we have actually reached our first watchtower. I can't even... There actually is no watchtower. There was just a blue box. Really? There was no watchtower. Okay. Um, that's a new one. Anyway, um, we'll go ahead and travel to our next one. That one was actually not that difficult to find. So we basically want to go back down the road we've just come, um, then carry on probably on that on this road here um, until we get to here, and then just follow this round and hope that leads somewhere near the watchtower. Right, so we just need to back it up. Oh, the watchtower's behind us, that's why I didn't see it. My bad. There is a watchtower, it's just hidden in the trees. I have to say, this um, International Load Star is absolutely awesome. The fact that it has so many um, add ons, the frame add ons, um, they're really useful, especially the loading crane. Um, I mean, it has all-wheel drive, it has diff locks, you can raise the thing. I mean, this thing is actually a monster. And 
a lot of the um, the SnowRunner community will agree with me that this is probably the best scout vehicle in the game. It's not the best off-roading scout vehicle, so some of the other scout vehicles are actually better off-roading. But the fact that this thing can pull a trailer, which some of the other scout vehicles can't do, and it has those frame add-ons like the crane and the van body add-on, that makes it just so much more practical. And um, I think it looks pretty cool as well. It's a pretty good looking scout vehicle. We also seem to be having a bit of an international exploring sort of uh, phase at the moment. We originally we went in the International Fleet Star and then we went to Alaska with the International Trans Star and now we are in the International Load Star in Russia. So yeah, we've um, we've done a bit of a full circle really. We've uh, explored all of the internationals in the game. We did take the um, International Scout 800 out in uh, one of the episodes as well. We took that to Michigan. That's also a little bit more boggy than I would have liked, but it has made it through, so that's good. Uh, this will be a good test for it, just to see. Oh, that trailer just popped out of the ground. So far, I am actually really enjoying the Rift map as well. Um, I actually have no idea why it's called the Rift. I don't know what a Rift is. So, someone in the comments will hopefully let me know. Um, which way do we want to be going here? Um, hmm. I think there is a broken bridge ahead, but this road does take us sort of round there. Um, yeah. So this is the broken bridge. Do we reckon the international load start can make it across there without having to go all the way around? I'm not sure. I feel like it could. It's a pretty good off-road vehicle. We've got the off-road gearbox. We have got a snorkel. So let's give it a try. This side doesn't look too bad. Yeah, it doesn't have any issues with that. I think we are just stuck on a little rock there. Yeah, we're okay, and we are across. So the International Load Star can make it across. Uh, where do we want to be going now? So every episode I do when I have a new vehicle and we'll be trundling along like this, I try and give you guys some of the, um, the good points and the bad points about this vehicle. I give like a little short review of my opinion of the vehicle and honestly there are no real bad points for the International Loadstar. It's actually a really good vehicle. Um, I've been trying to think of something bad that I can actually point out on this vehicle but I really can't think of anything. It's a pretty good vehicle. This is a little bit of a narrow windy path. This is why you need a scout vehicle for going exploring. If you are trying to uncloak the watchtowers, I would definitely recommend a scout vehicle. For whatever map you're on, just always use a scout vehicle for the watchtowers, because you're gonna have a lot better look. Um, I believe the watchtower should just be around here somewhere. Um, let me just have a look. Um, oh, we have gone past it a little bit, so we need to just go back and it is just right there. That's the other kind of problem that um, you get sometimes and it's not really a fault of the game that's just how it's made um, but because the maps look so much bigger than they actually are um, occasionally you will drive past the point that you need to turn off at so it's always a good way to um, um, set a waypoint basically to where you're going make a little route is this watchtower hidden as well? Right, I'm going to have a good look this time. Oh, it's there. It's like, it's in the tree. It's like a tiny little tower. It's kind of camouflaged. Let's go ahead and launch the observation. Absolutely lovely. I do really like the rift map. I do have to say it is pretty nice. Um, we have uncloaked quite a large portion of the map now. 
and we only have one watchtower actually left to go and discover. This thing looks so good in yellow as well. I know I've used yellow for a few of the vehicles already, um, especially the Hummer, but this thing just really does suit yellow. I saw a video of it on YouTube in yellow, and uh, ever since then I was like, yeah, when I make a video on that thing, I'm going to paint it that colour. I was just going to say, surprisingly, we haven't had to use the winch at all yet. I didn't really want to say that because I feel like now I am going to have to use the winch. Curse of the commentator. Um, so hopefully we don't. This thing is a very good off-road, I have to say. Um, it's probably my new favourite scout vehicle in the game, I'm not going to lie. The only thing that does concern me a little bit, which I have just noticed, is we only have 25 litres of fuel left. So, I'm hoping we may be able to get this last watchtower. Um, there is also a fuel trailer just over here, so... Our new goal might be to see if we can make it to this fuel trailer just before we go and get the last watch point. Right, we've got a river crossing ahead. It doesn't look too bad. I'm going to stick it in a low range, just low range. I'm not going to go for any of the other options and just see if this thing can make it across here. This may eat quite a lot of our fuel. And curse the commentator, I may have to use the winch. Although it's actually doing a pretty good job of this. Come on, Lodestar, you can do this. You've got the power. There we go. Let's stick it back in automatic. Made it through that relatively easily, actually. Did a pretty good job. I'm very impressed. Right, we only have 18, 17 litres of fuel left. I don't know if that's going to make it to the fuel carrying scout. I'm hoping it can. It's a shame you can't get a fuel add-on for this vehicle because it's the only bad point that I have managed to come up with on this vehicle is that it drinks fuel like a fish. Okay, luckily we have managed to make it to the fuel trailer with five liters of fuel left. That is absolutely incredible. Um, so let's go ahead and fuel this thing back up. Oh my god. I was bricking it for the last like two or three minutes there. I was like, no, we're going to run out before we get to it. Luckily, we have managed to make it to the fuel trailer. And this is actually where we went and rescued the APC from. Uh, we pulled it out of that ditch down there. So the last watchtower is not all that far away and I have actually managed to basically uncloak its location. So we basically just want to go back onto this road over here and take a turn off here and the watchtower is right there. And here we go, the last watchtower and actually a truck here as well. I don't know if that's a truck we can go and, and get. Um, but we have discovered the last watchtower. Let's launch the observation. That is the most pathetic watchtower I've ever seen. But um, we have now fully uncloaked the rift map. We've got all of the uh, missions that we can go and do, all of the trailers, all of the sort of um, the little like warehouses and all of that. Um, but that is going to do it for today's episode guys thank you all so much for watching i hope you have enjoyed taking another look at the rift map with me we also had a good look at the international lodestar if you guys haven't got this vehicle and you're just starting out or even if you are a, a long time player of snowrunner i would definitely recommend the international lodestar it's an amazing scout vehicle the fact that it has all-wheel drive, diff locks, everything I've mentioned in this video is absolutely incredible. So definitely recommend the International Lodestar to you. But that is going to be it. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you have enjoyed and I'll see you all in the next episode.